Now, reciprocal inhibition is another technique that works on contractile tissue. So, reciprocal inhibition works on the antagonist providing reciprocal inhibition via the muscle spindle. So the muscle spindle is the primary neurophysiological transducer behind reciprocal inhibition. So for example, if my hamstrings are, um, I'm trying to target my hamstrings, if I contract my quadriceps and antagonist of the hamstrings, then I'll fire off a nerve from uh, the, the aff afferents from the muscle spindle in the, in the quadriceps will fire into the central nervous system, spinal cord, that via an interneuron will then inhibit the hamstrings. So reciprocal inhibition provides inhibition for overactive muscles. Now, so we've got a couple of choices. We can, active, we can use reciprocal inhibition via an antagonist in the limb for the hamstrings, but the hamstrings being a multi-joint muscle also work at the top end, the pelvis. So the hamstrings produce posterior tilt of the pelvis, so the muscles that produce anterior tilt of the pelvis will also provide reciprocal inhibition to the hamstrings. So for example, I could activate my abdominal, my iliacus in the anterior abdominal wall or lower abdominal wall in the groin and my back extensors. If I activate my anterior tilt muscles to reciprocally inhibit the posterior tilt hamstrings, I can get reciprocal inhibition. So for example, the way that we might apply that would be to passively take the hamstrings to its end point of extensibility, then actively while we support that there, or passively stabilize the leg in that position, actively anterior tilt the pelvis using the back extensor stabilizers and iliacus at the front of the hip to provide reciprocal inhibition to the hamstrings. If we sustain that for 20 to 30 seconds, long enough to overcome the upregulation in the hamstrings due to the passive stretch and the, the, stretch, the stretch sensation in the hamstrings will fire off the stretch reflex and, and create a response there. So if we sustain that for more than 20 to 30 seconds, we'll allow for down regulation of the stretch reflex but get good inhibition of the hamstrings. So we've got reciprocal inhibition, which is our preferred technique for dealing with short overactive muscles, or muscles that have upregulated their recruitment because of an ongoing pain mechanism. So, and with, our re with the reciprocal inhibition, we can either use a mobiliser muscle in the leg, so we can use the rectus femoris to inhibit the hamstrings, or we can use stabiliser muscles in the core to inhibit the hamstrings. It's preferable, when possible, to use active recruitment of stabiliser muscles in the core to provide that reciprocal inhibition because it also provides the advantage of doing postural control and stabiliser recruitment training in the core while at the same time we're getting inhibition and length gains and increasing extensibility in the peripheral hamstring muscle.